There are plenty of people around the country who tell me that they are actually wary of stepping into this minefield because they see it as a minefield. At the moment that they start uh, talking about this issue locally, uh, they will be branded racists. Uh, the fact is it's been going on for centuries across cultures, across religions, um, all over the world. Any idea that you can't speak about criminal offences because they take place in a part of the community which is a minority is appalling. I, I find that quite offensive as a member, if you like, of a minority community. I think it's much better for everybody if these things are brought into the open and discussed. I think some people are happy. There's brown people wiping out brown people. How does it really affect me as a white person? Perhaps not a lot. It's their culture. I go and visit Benaz's grave from time to time. And I'm not sure how many other people actually do that. And I'm not sure if anyone else would ever be able to find it because that grave was left unmarked for years after the trial. Right, it's round here somewhere and I'm Well, that's, that is new. That is absolutely new, that, that marker. But, uh, I'm pleased that that's on there. That's good. Of course, what the family wanted was to wipe her name off the face of the earth. I think Beckhall told me when I saw her the last time that um, she'd planted some lilies, some, some lily bulbs. Um, in there, which were her sister's favourite flowers. Which is really nice. A bit early for them to be coming up yet, but it'd be nice when they come out. It, it's my opinion that the best way to curb um, on a killings is through education. Nurses who see these people firsthand. I'm talking about police officers who have to police this. I'm talking about MPs who should be passing legislation and understanding the dynamics. We just need some training and we need to, we need to be raising awareness and talking about this issue and not letting it get swept under the carpet in the name of political correctness. Let's not, let's not do that. Let's confront the issues and deal with them. I think the fact that honour is a total misnomer, there's no honour in any of this, um, the law has a word for it, it's murder. There is very much a tendency to stereotype honour killings as if they were an entirely Muslim phenomenon. This is not the case, and it's not just that this perception leads to xenophobia and negative stereotypes about Muslims, this also means that authorities are in danger of missing women at risk. If they think that you have to be Muslim to be at risk, and they don't provide protection because they don't believe you, then this is a very, very serious issue for women of other communities. Do you feel like your life is still in danger? Yes, I do. I feel like my life it will always be in danger. Safety is something I dream of. Yep, something that I really, really am longing for, but... In my circumstances, I don't think that's going to happen very time soon. I'm only doing this in the name of my sister, you know, for my sister. And, you know, she will always live on in my heart, in my life. I certainly felt that we had become surrogate parents, you know, because we didn't feel that she was loved by her own, by her own parents, that we, we took over that parenting, parenting role. But, uh, and, and that doesn't mean that we were too close to the investigation. It just meant that we were showing her love and respect and that, that someone, someone should love her, someone should care. So we did, and we still do. 
I want people to remember Benes as a loving, giving, warm young woman who did nothing wrong in her life other than to love someone that they disapproved of. That's how I want her to be remembered. So my advice to the women out there is follow your dream. Leave home if you need to. Leave the area you're in if you have to. If your parents can't stand by you and love you and care for you, respect you for who you are, then you take your life away from them and you have a life. But the isolation has to come or there's no happiness. I have been there and I'll tell you something, I left home at just under 16 years old. You make friends that once you've left home, when you make friends, you make friends that are there for you for life and that's what you have to replace your family by. If your family can't be who they're supposed to be and be your family, then you make your own family. I am glad I left home, because if I was at home now, I wouldn't be at home, I would be in the back garden buried. I'm lucky I'm even here. So leaving home is the best thing I've ever done, and I wouldn't change it. I would just change one thing. I should have taken bananas with me.